Welcome back, everyone rejoining. Welcome if you're new here. I appreciate you guys coming out, checking out my content. And today we're taking a look at uh, procedural world generation. Mostly because I wanted an ocean. And uh, that was it. There was like pirate, there was pirate theme stuff, and then there was immersive templates. Those two things were pretty, pretty sweet this month. Free, so. Bam. We got some procedurally generated landscapes. I mean, it's not, a, it's not completely done, but it's a. Uh, it's it's good enough so to start off with we have our structure primary data asset interface primary data asset then the data asset now the structure here has a level names and probability map which is a name and then a float the specific level maps which was an int vector and a name so these are specific tiles that you want to generate the tile size so the size of our tiles and then some tags now our uh, interface has the as and the gets here same as our as here and then the gets pda primary data asset has the data here as long as well as with the implemented interface and then the functions our world gen data here our data asset contains these level names so level 0 1 level 0 2 level 0 3 so these are going to be the levels that we're actually going to spawn in, in our main one. And then we have these tile size, which this tile size is currently set to 10,000. And these levels here, you'll have to set up in a separate folder, basically. Um, I have them over here in the map. So we have our main new world, which is our main map. And then we have all these other levels that we create. Well, I created. So level zero, level one. And each one of these is uh, set to a certain size. So if I open up level three here, for example, you can see you have this oceanology lake here. Now this is unlit, or well, it's lit, but here's unlit. So this is what it looks like. It's just like a cube, but um, mentioning a 10,000 10, size, you can see over here, that would be a scaled. This is a normal size. This is a normal cube. So the scale is 100 by 100 on the X and the Y, and then the, the Z is a 1 times. Now, luckily for me, this oceanology um, ocean or lake box, I guess you want to call it, is scaled to the cube. So this has the same. It's, it's scaled to the cube, but the scaling is a little weird on there. So you'll just have to play around and get it correct. But I wanted just an ocean, so... You can use whatever you want. These are just uh, these are just going to be your level tiles, basically. So this one, level three, is a boat here. Got a boat in the middle. That's going to spawn in. Uh, if I open up level two, we've got just a piece of coral in the center. And level one is just a blank one here. This is just a blank tile. With all the with all these scalings the same, so. I believe it's a hundred, right? Because if it's ten thousand in tile size, scale for your regular cube would be a hundred. So whatever that math works out, hundred, hundred centimeters, and then it's like one meter or something. I'm, I don't know the math on that all all too well. So that's it. You get the three the, your set of levels here. You set them up in your data, and then now. We need to create a component. Now, over in the component, before we get started, we have a also a little util function library here. And these this has four four functions here. Level coordinates to world position. So this takes in a coordinate, which is an int vector, the tile size, and then the, it outputs a world position. And this is just doing a multiply for each one of these values by the tile size, and it makes a vector. So that's what it means by level coordinates by world to world position. This is also a pure function. The get actor coordinates takes in an actor, the tile size, and then this does a division by the x and the y, and then truncates it and makes a new vector. So the outputs here is a coordinate, and then the inputs are an actor and a tile size. And this is getting, is basically doing the uh, reverse of the level coordinates to world position. This is getting an actor position 
to a coordinate. Uh, we have an equals here, which takes in one int vector, two int vectors, and it just combi and it just compares our x, y, and z's all equal, and then just returns it. The get tiles and range. This has a handful of uh, local variables here. This is a uh, this is quite a hand um, quite an in-depth function. It's a little messy. It looks like so we have two local variables. One's going to be the the current current tile that we're iterating through along with the uh, all the levels that we get within our render range. So we start off with clearing it and then we run two for loops. This is going to be the X and this is going to be the Y here. And so you can see here when we follow this, this is the X value. This is going to go down and feed down into here. And then the Y is going to feed here down into here so x feeds across into this and then y feeds into here with the which are two multiplies by the tile size and then a make vector into a vector length and then this is doing a render range multiplied by the tile size if the length is less than um, this render range basically then we go ahead and we we label it as like an official uh, official tile basically so the x is the the first for x here gets shunted down and in, up into here and then this is taking the current input coordinate breaking it and then adding it to the x and y of our our values here for the for, for loop and then that's making a vector and then setting it locally and then it adds it to these local coordinates which is what's going to get returned a little messy but it's here and it adds x yep this is the x it's added together y gets added together and that gets the new coordinates in the world space and then we save that to that array and then on the completed here when we complete this tile we we are returning all the local coordinates that we found so this is a way of gathering up a set of coordinates that is within basically a, a circle. So this is like our circle here with the X and the Y. And then we're checking it if it's in a range. So this is doing a basic circle check and then a valid, if it's a the valid coordinate we want to use, we uh to go ahead and make make the new vector for it and then add it to the local here to return. Now, over in the component, additionally, to go along with this component, we have an interface that's going to go on to our character. And this is just going to get us some uh, some properties here. So this interface will go on to our character. We'll have the as, and then we'll have this get explorer properties, which is going to be an actor reference. I don't believe we're using the location, but it's there. And then the current render range that the, the character is currently using. So when that gets attached to the character, we have all that information available. Now, here in the component, we'll start on the begin play. And on the begin play, we have a bunch of variables that we need to set up. Yeah, we're in the begin play. So, but before we get started here, the, uh, the handful of variables we have, we have a map, which is an int vector, which is streaming levels, which is an int vector, and a level level streaming. So these are going to be coordinates, and then the level that we load in. We have tile size, we have the general world gen data, update timer, random stream, world seed, the current uh, world gen ID that we're going to get out of the database, the render range, or the cat. Well, actually, I don't even think we need this. Um, yeah, we don't need this one because we're passing in the render range. So this was an old one. And then an update speed here, which is... And then these have all... This one doesn't have any defaults. This tile size has a default of 5,000, but it, that gets from the primary data asset, which is 10,000. This is not set to anything for right now. This isn't set to anything. The random seed is set to zero here. The generate world ID is set to default, which is over in our data asset. 
We've got the update speed, which is set to one. We've got the world gen database that's set up for our world gen. So now in the component, we start off with our big game play by setting up the an event timer, saving the event timer, setting up a random seed, querying our database for our ID, getting our world, setting our world gen data, and then setting our tile size. Now this timer is going to run an update every second, and basically it's just going to go through and find out what keys need or what levels need to be uh, loaded in. So on this update, it's going to run an update here. And that's going to get all the new render coordinates. That's going to loop through all these new coordinates. So these are the coordinates that we need to render. Check these streaming levels. Does the new coordinates exist in here? Yeah, we loop through the keys. We check for the keys in the coordinates. And then we just toggle. So basically, here, this is checking checking this map uh, to toggle on and off our level. Now in our update world here, this is where we're going to get all of our actors with the interface of World Explorer. So that's what the interface is named here. And we'll loop through, cast that interface, or make the call to the interface, and then get the properties. And the properties are going to be the actor reference, and then the render range. And so off of that, we'll run our blueprint function library to go from our actor's position to a coordinate, and then the tile size, well, which brings in the tile size. And then this will run the generate tiles, which will generate all of the tiles for in the range for all the players, basically, because that's what's going to happen here. We've got a local variable for the new render coordinates, which are going to be the brand new render coordinates, and that's what's going to return off this for loop. So this generate tiles in range looks a bit complicated, but it's not. So we call our blueprint function library a method to get all of the tiles that are in range of our current coordinate, right? with a render range and coordinates. So that returns these tiles. Then we will return this off of this for each loop completed because we just want to pass these uh, coordinates through. But anyways, for each of these for loops, for each of these coordinates, we'll go through, we'll get the current one, we'll save it as a local variable. We'll check our streaming levels if it exists. If our tile exists in our map, then toggle it. If it does not exist, then what we're going to go here is we're going to go into the fall. So we're going to load level by instance. And this level instance is going to take in that level name that it gets from the current uh, data asset, basically. So this level coordinates, blueprint, or this isn't a blueprint function. This actually is in the in here because it's actually a pure it's a another pure function here that oh that all of these blueprint function library ones are also pure all of them they're all pure here because they're only doing some sort of a just basic calculation so these will go it will get the uh get the level coordinates here out of this and this is just doing a this coordinates is just doing a um it's just trying to find the name out of the level names and probability here for the gen data so this will go through it'll check to see is the coordinate in our specific level map if it is then just get that name if it's not then we go down into the false we grab the keys and then we grab a random item out of that key list here, save it as a random uh, random index local variable, and then we're going to compare the probability of this value that we get. We're going to just get the, get the probability, 
And then we're just going to get a random float, compare those two, and then branch. If we can use the random level and it's within the probability, then go and get that key, whatever key at that random index, and return it. So that's how we're just going to pick a random level with a random weighted po uh, probability. Now on the update, right, we were back in the update, or we're in the generate. Oh, no, we were in the generate here. So this is basically just going to get a random level name based on out of our data asset or whatever world gen data we saved. Grab the coordinates, create the location. And then this is just going to create a basically a brand new string. So we're just going to append X, Y, and Z all in this order. And that'll be the new name for the level. On a success, we add it to our streaming levels. And then we toggle, toggle it loaded. Now this toggle is over here. And this toggle just simply takes the level with the coordinate and then just says should be loaded off of this level streaming, should be loaded, should be visible. Basically loading the level into our world. And that's it. So it'll go through and set up this timer, run this update every every second, basically, and it'll update and it'll grab the coordinates of all the players and generate those tiles in their render range here. Generate the tiles in the render range. And simply either load or unload the tiles. And that's pretty much it. Now if we see it in action, if I pop over into the maps here. Oh, you also, for this component, this component goes on the uh, game state, believe it or not. Because we want to keep track of the current levels that are loaded, and the game state by default is replicated. You do have to set this variable, this variable that I'm... This one was the only one that I had to set to replicated, but I don't think this is needed um, right now, but I will keep it. So yeah, with that, we can go into our main world, set up the set up our basic game mode here. And so that has our game state, which is going to automatically generate the world for us when we hit play. And we can see that it generates a random landscape. You can see the boats have a sp specific level, the, the coral, and it's replicated because it's on a game state. Now, there's no swimming, and I hope anyone's not fear of uh, deep waters because I'm just kidding, it's not actually that deep. And the levels will load in as you continue to uh, walk forward. You can probably see Excuse me. You can see as I probably walk forward that the rendering will pop in and will generate new tiles. And this works on the game state, which is going to query all the players. So even if the player runs out of rendering distance of the other player, the tiles will be respected of whatever the current, current player is here and wherever their location in the world is. That's all I wanted to say. I hope you guys found that helpful. And uh, appreciate you guys coming out.